Okay, <clears throat> morning everyone. What's up, Goldie here, and I'm going to be going over the main slate here on um, April 11th, it's a Tuesday. Um, I didn't even count, so here we go. Ten games, uh, and I think you know last night we had a bunch of really good pitching performances, right? Um, Nothing that we was too unexpected, I guess. Um, maybe a little disappointing for Darvish that he got hung for I don't know, five or whatever it was um, after the bullpen kind of um, laid him with another couple after he came out of the game. But um, nothing too too surprising on the mound last night. However, uh, quite disappointing for a lot of the um a lot of the very popular teams Seattle uh was pretty popular um they disappointed pretty significantly of course the Cardinals got taken apart a little bit by Herman Marquez before he came out of the game um and the Angels were very disappointing in aggregate uh, a couple of guys had some okay starts uh, Luis Arnjifo was serviceable um, in particular, but, uh, of course, Hunter Renfro, I think he was the only one that really got there. But Otani was bad, Trout was bad, uh, Brandon Drury was bad, you know, so, and they had a, a really, really good matchup last night against Patrick Corbin. Um, but that's the variance we're going to get with the Angels a lot of the time. And, unfortunately... Um, they didn't get there. So, but we can go right back to them again tonight. They get JoJo Gray on the mound down here. Uh, Otani, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to play him as a hitter. We'd really like to. Um, but JoJo gives up uh, a lot of power. And despite the fact that he got the Rockies last time out and performed pretty well, um, I think we're, we're going to be able to just keep fading JoJo. Uh, Still too much hard contact, so a good target down there. Um, overall, tonight, I think we're going to have a little bit of a, a different makeup. Uh, we do, do still, of course, have some really good arms on the mound, notably Jacob deGrom gets the Royals. Um, but there's plenty of other other spots, I think, perhaps under the radar a little bit. you got a cheap Corbin Burns here, just 8,500. Um, we have Alec Manoa chalk against Detroit. Kyle Wright making his first start for the Reds, uh, against the Reds, rather, for Atlanta. Um, and then we've got a couple other interesting spots that we'll get to here when we get into the breakdown. So I think uh, it's going to be a little um, less heavy on the outsized pitching performances of the evening, and I think we should be able to get some offense uh, out of a lot of these spots because definitely some attackable places as well. Uh, we talked about the JoJo spot. Certainly at Coors, you got both Michaelis and Freeland on the mound. Neither of these guys have overwhelming whiff stuff. They could survive for sure, but um, I think we can go right back to Coors Field, of course. Definitely Texas again. They really got to not so much Granky, uh, more so the bullpen um, for the Royals last night. We can go after Jordan Lyles, definitely. Um, maybe some pitching here in in minnesota but you could play seattle um we could consider seattle more on uh on the hayden train over here but uh we'll get into that so certainly we can attack like louis sessa with atlanta for example um so i think we should be able to see a little bit more offense tonight uh, overall last night it was pretty low scoring uh, given a, a full eight game slate i think winning tournament teams were Short of 200 in a lot of spots, so uh, at least on DK. Um, so we do have projections up this morning. Um, but keep in mind, that, like once again, guys, these early numbers uh, are, are very noisy. Uh, we saw yesterday that uh, a lot of ownership changed throughout the day, uh, and that's, that's going to happen. So don't put too much stock in, in the initial ownership numbers here. But, um, of course, for premium subs, we are pushing projections several times a day. 
um, to the site, and, and these get updated very frequently. So keep an eye on on how things change. The median project, the fantasy point projection itself doesn't change a whole hell of a lot. Um, sometimes it, you know, you'll, you'll see it move around by a couple points, but it, mostly it's the ownership. So keep an eye on that um, throughout the day on the on the site, they'll get uh, automatically pushed over to Saversim for those that have that package as well. So that said, let's uh, let's get into the games, and we'll start with Detroit and Toronto, I believe. Um, right at the top, yeah. We got Matt Manning on the mound for the Tigers, and this is an interesting spot here. I think uh, you know the Blue Jays; they're actually popping into betting markets um, with a run total pushing six today. And on first blush, I thought that was probably okay. Um, maybe a little high, but Matt Manning here, he is, he's not a total gas can. Um, the, the problem with Manning really is that he just doesn't throw it by anybody, right? Just an 18% K rate, 9% swinging strike rate, 25% CSW. So he's throwing it over the plate, high contact rate, 81%. And... Unfortunately for opposing offenses, that's really not translating into a whole hell of a lot of power. Um, and with just a neutral ground ball to fly ball, you'd kind of expect with this high a contact rate, this low a strikeout rate, that some of the average and the and the power numbers would be elevated. But they're really not against Matt Manning. So he's not a total can over here. Um, mostly a two and three pitch guy with a four seamer slider curveball. Curveball is not very good, probably using it a bit too much. Um, but he'll mix in a, t a little bit of a two seamer, two seamer rather, at about 93, and and a change as well. And with a bad change here, just a six seven mile an hour velo delta to the four seamer, um, we're not seeing any value here either. Now still just kind of a, a short-ish sample on Manning, but the supp suppression metrics are overall pretty decent for a, a middle-of-the-rotation type of guy um, with a menial arsenal. You know, three and a half ERA and four and a half XFIP. So could see some, due to these contact numbers, could see a little bit of regression in in the suppression metrics. Um, but everything else looks fine. He, despite a pretty low first pitch strike rate, He's got enough of a workable arsenal in the secondary pitches to keep him out of trouble deeper in the count. So he's not getting ahead of hitters. And pitching to this much contact, we do have a little bit of concern that Manning's probably going to give up a real big number here soon. Um, but that said, four and five pitches in the big leagues, it gives a, a lot more for the hitters to uh, be aware of when they step into the box and you know even if any of the five pitches here are not overly excellent in terms of value relative to the rest of the league um it's still five pitches and still five pit five different pitches that uh, that hitters have to be cognizant of when they step in so um he stays off the barrel and at just a neutral ground ball to fly ball, that, that really does help him neutralize some of this contract. So um, hard contact to righties is a little bit worrisome, and that's probably why we're seeing the elevated run total here for the Blue Jays today. 36% in the pitch info, that is a high number. Hasn't quite, as I mentioned, yet translated into uh, kind of an outsized ISO. Um, but just a 20% strikeout rate, and that's really that's generally not how we want to be going after the Blue Jays. Um, good slider here, so he, this Blue Jays team can get a little out of sorts sometimes and, and strike out a little bit. There's some guys over here that will swing and miss. Bo Bichette, uh, Varsho, Matt Chapman, they'll swing and miss for sure. Kevin Biggio definitely down at the lineup, uh, bottom of the lineup. He'll swing and miss. So... There are some hidden strikeouts here, uh, but overall, even at 6,400 against the Blue Jays, I don't think we want to be uh, going out of our way to mix in Matt Manning to our pools. I think we'll probably stay in the upper um, upper tier of the pitching spectrum today and maybe dip down as low 
as like a, I don't know, a Merrill Kelly or something like that. So probably not going to be getting much Matt Manning. Maybe, so, I mean, nobody's going to be playing him. Um, and I think there's upside to pop to maybe a 15, 16 points here and, and suppress, survive for about five innings against the Blue Jays. Um, given that these contact numbers, you know, that this isn't a, a small sample necessarily, 68 and two thirds, and really to, to both sides of the plate, um, that they, they look really strong so far, uh, despite the lack of overwhelming whiff stuff. So, um, a lot of soft contact that he induces to the right side of the plate. So that could really be the, the route that keeps him in the baseball game through five innings or something like that. And, um, any of your Blue Jays teams over here, um, you know, might underperform a little bit due to that. But the hard contact number is is definitely worrisome for Matt Manning. So we can certainly get to some Blue Jays. They're probably going to be a an under-owned stack relative to some of the other offenses we have going. Uh, they have Alec Manoa going on the mound, and in early ownership runs, He's, uh, he's going to be the chalk arm in the mid-range, certainly. And this is where we want to be paying for Alec Manoa, or this is the price that we want to be paying. 7700 He just doesn't have the raw upside a lot of the time to blast through a $9,700, $9,800 price tag. And most of last season, that's where we saw him. You know, he's got good stuff. This is a good arm over here. Uh, it, but he's more of a pitcher than he is a strikeout pitcher. Uh despite the fact that he throws a lot of strikes, right? He's got four really good pitches here relative to um, to league average in value. This cutter here is probably just, uh, you know, getting, it's a slider miscategorized, for example. Um, but really splitting the difference here between all four pitches and, and good value. So, he suppresses very well, 235 ERA with a 407 XFIP. That's fantastic. And once again, doesn't walk people. So he's not going to put people on base for free, and he stays off of the barrel, which is what we need when uh, we're a four-seamer slider heavy arsenal and tending toward uh, the, the fly ball lean in the ground ball to fly ball metrics. So um, no hard contact here to speak of. He's, he's fantastic against the right side of the plate. And this is Detroit, so the ownership is probably pretty warranted here, but there are some other arms in the same range that I think you can get to uh, if you're playing a chalky stack, like a Cardinals uh, or even Rockies or the Angels again tonight. Um, I think you can certainly pivot off of Manoa. I don't think this is a, an absolute um, smash that you just have to lock in and, and uh, say good luck. There are some different uh, really high upside arms down here as well. Because at 7,700, while he can certainly and should certainly outperform this price tag, in aggregate, just a 23% K rate. And that's about average. Um, so it is a, an above average matchup. So that's why we're seeing the, the ownership number pump pretty good here. The median projection, however, um, I've mentioned several times that anytime it's north of 20, I start to balk a little bit, even for some of the best strikeout pitchers in the game. And Alec Manoa is not one of those. So, um, you know, Detroit here is is bad. They're going to swing and miss a truckload, like we saw them do against uh, Cutter Crawford the other day, for example, um, in, a, in a really good batted ball matchup there. Uh, they couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. So, um Alec Manoa, a markedly better arm here, leading the rotation for the Blue Jays. Uh, I think you can get a, get a healthy amount of him, and if you're running teams right now, you're probably going to get about this number, um, depending on the stacks that you force in. So uh, no Tigers here for me. I don't really want to attack Manoa. Um, and I think getting a, a healthy amount here of both he and the Blue Jays uh, is probably pretty warranted. This hard contact number for Matt Manning a little worrisome. Uh, okay, might be able to target some offense here in the San Diego Mets game as well. We got Ryan Weathers on the mound, six thousand, good price tag for him. Not sure how deep he's going to be going into the game. Um, has been pretty limited so far, and just two starts, right? So uh, 
now that he's kind of back into big leagues, we're going to have to see how the Arsenal plays. Um, not great value so far on the four-seamer, and he's had trouble throwing strikes. Uh, sub 50%. It's very worrisome in his couple of starts so far. Um, so we, we don't want to deal with that. There's a pretty patient team over here in the Mets. Um, in the aggregate, just 180 PAs so far against lefties this season, striking out just a 20% clip. Uh, average walk rate, 8% or so. But uh, these guys can create, and uh, they all very good hitters, very dangerous hitters that hit lefties pretty well. And certainly when we get into the, the righties for the Mets, um, keep an eye on Starling Marte. Once again, he did sit. But uh, Frankie Lindor, Pete Alonso, he's been really heating up uh, over the last week or so. Tommy Pham, good price tag. It's an okay price tag. Pham just kind of stinks, but um, at this point of his career, for DFS at least. 3700 that's playable. 3600 for Marcana, also playable. Jeff McNeil is a pretty good hitter, and he'll hit lefties okay. Uh, and Eddie Escobar, probably a bit expensive down here in the 8, but at, at 4100 but uh, he'll hit from both sides. Um, Frankie Alvarez, they just called up, top prospect for them. He, he got a, a taste of the big leagues last year, and it looks like they're probably going to um, try and keep him up most of this season and, and just let him go. So is a is a big, big kid behind the plate. Fortunately, uh, the rest of their lineup is so good that uh, we're probably not going to get him up in the five or the six hole or anything like that, and, unless he just starts to go on a heater. Um, so you can you can start to mix in Frankie Alvarez down here at uh, pretty much anything under 2,700, I would say, in, in pretty much any um, any split. He'll hit righties. Uh, just fine as well. So you can get to a little bit of the Mets here. Um, and I mean, with Ryan Weathers' walk problems here that he's displayed so far and a very low strikeout rate, he's throwing hard at 95. Good 9-mile-an-hour velo dealt on the change. Um, but we need to see a bit more from him. He's got to start throwing strikes before we start considering playing him against really good teams. Uh, so just the Mets on offense here for me. David Peterson on the other side. 6,800, ugh, uh, this is a little worrisome as well for David Peterson. Um, he has trouble throwing strikes also, 53% first pitch strike rate. And this is over a far larger sample, 114 and two-thirds. Um, mixture of bullpen and, and starts for him, but so that's why we see kind of an elevated pitches per start number here. Um, so don't put too much stock into that. It's a little uh, little noisy there, but a buck fifty whip and about a 4.0 ERA, slightly better xFIP, uh, but that's just because he's got some some pretty decent K stuff. Um, neutral value on the four seamer, less so on the on the sinker, but throwing a, a solid four pitches, mixing in the curveball with the slider and the change as well. So overall, a pretty workable arsenal, but. Um, at, I mean, 11% walk rate, this is no thank you. And it's really to both sides of the plate. So it's not necessarily that uh, he's just having trouble uh, with with righties uh, or anything like that. I mean, they'll, they'll hit him for some average, 264, 335, wove and a buck 40 ISO. But he's still got a 26% K rate and 080 homers per nine. So um, hard contact, a little elevated both to both sides of the plate, over 30%, and we start to get a little worried. That's kind of the threshold. But big ground ball rate, so not terribly concerning with some of the righties because of the suppression numbers in the batted ball categories. Hard contact, you know, if he's getting two to one ground balls per fly ball to the right side of the plate, we don't really care if this hard contact's at, at about 35, 30%. We start to get a little worried if it were like 35 but... Um, you know, that said, on the other side, two lefties is where he's been a little bit more vulnerable. They're not going to hit for average, 181, and they're going to strike out a lot, 33%. But a 191 ISO. So he's piping the baseball a little bit here, um, two lefties. And that's really the four-seamer at dead neutral value to the rest of the league. So um, markedly lower ground ball to fly ball ratio against lefties, same walk rate, over 10%. And that will translate 
with the 38% hard contact to the left side to a 1.6 homers per nine. So a little bit susceptible there. Um, can we get to San Diego? Sure. I mean, this is a good lineup over here. In the early part of the season, 160 PAs against lefties they've had so far, 16.5% strikeout rate. So um, very sticky over here, and this is probably going to be their plus side of the platoon uh, facing left-handers. So, of course, they've got Soto, who hits lefties just fine. 6,000, not sure we want to pay for that today. But, um, of course, you have Xander, who's probably going to lead off. Manny, 5,800. We're getting a little stiff in the in the price categories here uh, for these guys. But Hassan Kim at 2,700, kind of a pest at the plate. He'll make those guys at the top of the lineup uh, much easier to get to. Austin Nola at 3,200. He is a stack catcher piece. That you can include would probably stay off of Cronenworth, even though he's he's most mostly neutral to lefties and righties. 4,400, not my favorite price tag, but you can play some Nelson Cruz. He has shown a little bit of pop still. Uh, 4,600, not the greatest, but uh, so that's why we're seeing probably a, a depressed run total here a little bit. Uh, if you need to get super cheap with it, you can round out with a Jose Ozokar, who's got some speed down at the bottom of the lineup. Uh, if you're considering stacking some of San Diego. Uh, overall, probably going to be well down the list today, I think. Uh, plenty of other offenses I think we can target. And David Peterson does have some pretty good stuff. He's got enough to survive. Uh, it's really just the walks. So if you want to stack against two pitchers here, both Weathers and Peterson, that have displayed some problems keeping people off the base paths, then uh, then go ahead. That's really the recipe we're looking for. Um and neither of these teams strike out. So they're two very good offenses. And if you start giving people free outs, you're going to put yourself in some bad spots. So uh, no pitching here really for me. I don't like attacking the Padres in general. And at 6,800, I think I'd probably pivot up to a guy uh, that we'll get to later on in the slate rather than play David Peterson here. So moving on, Cincinnati and Atlanta. We have Luis Sessa on the mound for the Reds. Um, they got torn apart. Did the Reds yesterday by uh, Bryce Elder. Good to see him really performing well early in the season, showing some K stuff. Uh, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Luis Sessa does not have any K stuff, however. 17% for him. And he'll throw it over the plate. 80%, north of 80% contact rate as well. So um, when he's not going to throw it by you and he's going to pitch you a lot of contact, that's a pretty damn good recipe. High barrel rate, one of the highest numbers on the slate, at about 9.5%. So I think we can target this. One thing we'll worry about here is that he generally does not walk people. He's got about a 9%, which is walk rate, which is average. Um, you know, it's nothing terrible to speak of. Suppression metrics, 4.5 ERA, 440 expected. Perfectly fine. And really he's not stranding a lot of a lot of runners here. So if he puts some people on base via this high contact rate, they're, they're usually rounding and, and coming around. So... Um, I, I say usually, 71% is not usual, but um, compared to the rest of the league, we want to see this probably about 75 to 80% in a strand rate, so a little worrisome there for Sessa. So 6,700, we're not targeting the Braves with him, definitely not. How do we want to attack? Well, we can attack with same-handed hitters over here. He's displayed some pretty serious concerns to the right side of the plate, not so much in the average, 247 to both sides. Actually, 336 Woba to righties, but a 224 ISO, 18% strikeout rate. Buck 32 ground ball to fly ball, which is fine. 33% hard contact rate. Also, yeah, it's okay. Uh, it's elevated for sure, but a 2-0 homers per nine. So he's piping to baseball, and that's really because he didn't have all that great a slider and an out pitch against same-handed hitters. So um, not going to throw a change up a bunch to righties. But it's okay. It's about neutral value. Um, we'd like to see the, the velo drop off a little bit more. It's only got about a uh, what is this, five and a half or six mile an hour velo delta on the change to the four seamer sinker combo here. Uh, so that's a little worrisome as well. And that's really why he's not getting a whole hell of a lot of swinging miss. Just a swing, swing strike rate of 9%. CSW sitting right here at about 26. So this is definitely a target on the mound that we can go after today. Certainly with the Braves, as we've mentioned, we want to go after them with high strikeout pitchers. 
and even though Graham Ashcraft is not really one of them, he got to them a little bit yesterday as well. Uh, but Ashcraft mar markedly better control and and better stuff than Luis Sessa. So we can play some of the Braves here today for sure. Uh, Acuna, still expensive, and 63, he's going to be over 6,000 probably the entire season, so you're just going to have to deal with it. And he's going to be about 10 12% owned on basically every slate, and you're just going to have to deal with it. 54 for Matt Olson today. Um, I think it's a perfectly playable price tag as well, even though Luis Sessa's numbers against lefties, 130 ISO and an 090 homers per nine, are a little bit better than they are to the right side. So we can full stack here for sure. Austin Riley, 57. I mean, you got to pay for these guys, of course. But Sean Murphy, who had a really good day yesterday, finally, um, he'll be back in there today, most likely. Uh, I doubt they'd want to give him a day off just with... Um, you know, they could kind of work him a little bit with Travis Darno only on the seven-day concussion deal. Um, so they'll probably give him another start here, I would guess. Um, if not, I mean, who knows what they're going to do with the lineup. But Ozzy Albies, of course, you can play from both sides. 4700 This is a bit more of an attainable price tag. And he hits right. He's great. So Eddie Rosario, once again, a cheap piece, 2300 in the middle of the lineup. Very good point-per-dollar play. Popping really hard in that metric today. And down here at the bottom of the lineup, um, Kevin Pillar, Eli White, just filler pieces in stacks if you're getting after a Luis Sessa. You might get some of these if some of these guys if you're building a bunch of teams. Um, and I'm not crazy about it. I'm not going to go out of my way to one-off them necessarily, but uh, probably not going to X them from the pools either. Kyle Wright on the mound for the Braves. 9,300, he's making his first start of the season coming off a, a shoulder injury. Um, looks like the velocity is down pretty markedly from last season. A couple of ticks here, so we have to be mindful of this, but um, this has been the case for him really throughout the spring and his couple of rehab starts, uh, but he's stretched out, and the Braves don't look to be worried here. If uh, like This is a pretty good arm for them. He performed very well last season. So if they were overly concerned with the velo drop, then, I mean, he wouldn't be starting today. So uh, I think we could be okay playing some Kyle Wright if you want to. I think at 18% ownership, given the other arms that we've got, like DeGrom and Otani, you have Lance Lynn around here as well. Um, like he might go under the radar a little bit and... I think that's fine. I, I'm probably not going to go out of my way to target Kyle Wright here today uh, against the Reds. I do respect the Reds a little bit against lefties. They've got TJ Friedel and Jake Fraley at the top of the lineup. These two guys going to make it pretty difficult. Johnny India, pretty good hitter as well. Tyler Stevenson, um, he'll hit right. He's okay. Now, it, that doesn't mean I want to stack the Reds. I'm not wild about India's price tag here at 5000 against Kyle Wright because Kyle Wright's numbers against righties are elite. Um, now, if that's going to change due to the uh, the shoulder injury and the velo drop, you know, we'll see. Um, so I'm personally a little concerned with the which is velocity. It doesn't mean that he's hurt still. Um, I'm not concerned with the health, uh, but... In terms of like DFS and, and raw upside, if you got a velo drop from 95 to whatever it is, 92, 93, even a couple of ticks there, it's a pretty significant drop. And even the weaker lineups in the bigs can still get to guys when you're only throwing 92, 93. Now, it does still have the full five-pitch arsenal here, but in general, the, the four-seamer isn't good at 95. So um, do we really want to be dealing with a bad four-seamer that he's throwing a little bit softer. I'm not. I'm not so sure. So, kind of a weird price tag here for Kyle Wright here today, and maybe a little elevated ownership, given given that um, median projection at uh, at about 18 points probably seems a, a bit stiff out of the gate here. So we'll see how this fleshes out the rest of the day. But uh, undoubtedly, the numbers are fantastic. Um, and this would be, if he were fully stretched out, and I think he is, he threw, I think, 85 pitches in his last rehab start. Um, if he's going to, if he's going to be, you know, to have a, or not have a leash, I suppose, um, 
and, and get out there for 95 or so, uh, I think this could be a reasonable reasonable pivot at lower ownership. However, we're not seeing the lower ownership just yet. So we'll see how it um, it fleshes out. But the numbers are great. If you want to get to him at all, it's going to be with some lefties. Uh, but I don't really want to go out of my way to be playing um, – you know, a 4,500 Jake Fraley here. He's a really good hitter. I like him against righties a lot. Uh, 3,500 TJ Friedel. If you want to play like a short stack of the Reds here with a Jason Bosler, it's cheap. 3,600, 4,500 for Fraley, 3,500 for Friedel. Uh, I think that's okay. And I probably wouldn't go too crazy here with this, uh, but that, that'd mostly just be kind of a, Hey, Kyle Wright's velo might be down. Let's uh, let's take some shots uh, with some good hitters over here at, at cheap price tags. I think that's reasonable. Um, but you know, overall, really good arsenal. If he stays off of the four seamer and just focuses on the the sinker, slider, curveball change, suppresses power, and you know the numbers are fantastic pretty much everywhere. So um, you know, doesn't walk people and stays off the barrel, and that's really what we want with Kyle Wright. Good ground ball rate, two to one here with it with the respectable strikeout rate. So it's fine if you want to play him. Um, I'm probably going to come in underweight to this number just because of the other guys on the on the day, but uh, I think it's fine if you want to get to full Braves correlations here. Uh, okay, let's move on. Seattle and the Cubs. As we mentioned at the outset, Seattle pretty disappointing last night uh, against Drew Smiley. Drew Smiley not disappointing. He, was, he survived, and uh, it was pretty good. Uh, Chris Flexen, Compared to Luis Castillo, I mean, Luis Castillo, he just didn't have his best stuff last night. It's not like he got beat up or anything. Um, but that's a little bit of the variance that we're going to run into with Castillo. Chris Flexen, he didn't strike anybody out. So um, he'll pop through this price tag at 75 and, and you know, a 10, 12-point median projection on occasion. Um, because he suppresses contact still pretty well. Not so much to the right side, but... Uh, but overall, he could still he he developed a cutter while he was over in the uh, in the KBO, and it really revived his career. Um, he's come back, he's brought it back to MLB, and the rest of the arsenal still just kind of stinks. But uh, the cutter has actually helped him survive. So um, suppresses contact in that regard, still giving up a little bit of power to the righties, however, instead of the lefties. Really good numbers against the lefties. Um, suppression wise, but a 268 average, 341 Woba, and a 202 ISO to righties, just a 14% K rate, translating to 1.7 homers per nine to the right side on a 30, 36% hard contact rate. So we'll give up some fly balls, 070 ground ball to fly ball to the righties. So that's how we were going to, we would want to go after him here. It doesn't mean that you can't play a cheap Cody Bellinger, um, against a guy that's not going to strike him out, right? At 3,400 in the four hole, I think this is a pretty okay play here today. Ian Happ, we really like against righties, definitely against righties that aren't going to blow it past him. 51, a little stiff. So it's going to keep these guys' ownership down, and their run total here pop, popping really hard early in the day. Um, Nico doesn't strike out, good hitter up here up top. And Dansby at 5,500, I think this is a playable piece as well. If you want to get to a cheaper Trey Mancini, and make it a full five man. Think that's reasonable. Patty Wisdom down here in the seven hole, uh, at at a full five thousand. I mean, I, I still don't know what we're doing here with this price tag on him. But you could you could play an Eric Hosmer if you want. Uh, Eric Hosmer still hits a, a a lot of ground balls and flexing against lefties at least. Even though he's not going to give up a a ton of power, just a 106 ISO, 050 homers per nine. Um, the batted ball profile, ground ball to fly ball ratio at 0.80 or so, that is favorable for some more line driving ground ball hitters like an Eric Hosmer, and he's cheap. So uh, feel free to get to some Cub stacks. They're going to be pretty off the board. Plenty of other teams that you'd almost rather get to and that the field will get to than the Cubs here today because overall a pretty low upside offense. But um, Chris Flexen's not going to throw it past him. So he will walk some people on occasion, slightly elevated, 9% walk rate, sub 60% strike one rate, and CSW rate here at, at, at 
under 23% is pretty miserable. One of the lower numbers in the league for a starting pitcher. So 16% aggregate K rate, going to pitch to a good bit of contact, 79% as well. So um, pushing 9% on the barrel, he's definitely susceptible to to getting blasted sometimes. And I think the Cubs could really get to him tonight. I think these, this is a, a good target for an off-the-board stack. Um, Hayden was nesting on the other side at 7,800. And median projection o- over here looking a little low to me at the moment. Uh, stuff is really good. And in his sort of taste of the big leagues last season came up. They gave him a few starts. He's had, I think, one, maybe even two starts this season. Um, he's performed very well. 263 ERA with a 370 XFIP. Bucko five whip, give or take. High strand rate, 86%. So that's probably a bit noisy here still in this small sample, just 37 and two-thirds. Um, but he's going deep into games so far, throwing a lot of pitches. And he's got a very workable arsenal. Full four pitches, using a change up here, which makes him a little bit susceptible to lefties because it's really not very good. Using it at about 7.5%, um, just six, seven miles an hour off of the fastballs. But mostly a, a four-seamer sinker cutter slider mix. Um, similar to a guy we'll get to maybe in the next game, Lance Lynn throwing a lot of fastballs here, but also relying heavily on a slider with a very good one. So that keeps him off of the barrel and keeps his numbers to right-handers down pretty significantly. 221 average allowed, 305 Woba, both really good numbers. 163 ISO, it's it's not terrible, um, but anything over 150 is just kind of, oh, okay, it's a number. When we start pushing the 200 mark, that's when we uh, that's when we start to get concerned. 24% K rate to the righties, really really strong. No hard contact to speak of whatsoever so far in this short sample of about 100 hitters. 16% hard contact to right to the right side. So it's the it's the fastball combination here, throwing all three of them at plus value and a really good slider. So that's neutralizing all of the uh, the power to right-handed hitters, just 1.2 homers per nine. He's going to be a very serviceable arm for the Cubs going forward. They they like him a lot. And to lefties, he's not all that susceptible either. 212 average allowed, 258 Wob, a really good number, and a 153 ISO as well, 25% K rate. So if you want to play a pretty unowned Hayden Wisniewski on the mound against Mariners, we saw Drew Smiley tear them apart last night. And there's going to be some variance here with the Mariners. Now, generally, I don't like attacking them of course i don't like going after julio i don't like going after ty france both really good hitters at the top of the lineup they're expensive though so i'm not sure like if i had to choose i'd i'd side with the the hurler on the on the mound for the cubs as opposed to paying 57 and 48 for for julio and ty france uh over here tay oscar at 5,000, still expensive um you know he popped what over the weekend i think hit another two bombs so he, he'll do that occasionally and, and that's really the, the risk that you take when you would fade the Mariners or something. Um, but I don't really want to go after them today. Initially seeing very low ownership on them, and, and we probably should. Um, I, I respect the arm over here, and I'm not sure I want to go out of my way to target him. So um, we'll see what they want to do. Sam Haggerty, he'll probably be in the list again. He's, he's just been terrible. Um, he's got like seven straight zeros or something. It's been very frustrating playing him because they're putting him in the six hole. He's a switch hitter. He's got multi-position eligibility, and he's mega cheap. So <laughs> whenever you're playing the Mariners over here, I mean, you're probably even getting him as, as a one-off play. So very frustrating with a couple of these guys that um, that really got torn apart last night. Cooper Hummel, Tom Murphy both had some pretty uh, – Pretty frustrating outings last night as well. So um, I'm going to probably stay off of the Mariners today. I might get some 7,800 uh, with Sineski on the mound um, for the Cubs. Okay, moving on. White Sox and the Twins. Um, this is the next game, and here is Lance Lynn. 9,000 on the mound for Lance today. Uh, probably expect a pretty good bounce out of him. He got beat up really, really good by the Giants in his last outing. And Twins not going to be able to um, get the ball in the air from the left side of the plate nearly as much as the Giants. So this is a markedly better matchup. Now, the Twins generally are going to be about average in the strikeout department. 
in 320 PAs against righties this season so far, just a 22% strikeout rate. So uh, nothing terribly attackable in general, but nothing um, that we necessarily want to avoid either. 17-point median projection so far and about 15% ownership. I think this is fine to be playing Lance Lynn. Um, he was really, really bad, and we can't expect that to continue. He's going to be fine. They still, even though he gave up 16 runs, they still let him throw uh, whatever it was, 100 pitches last start, uh, and go deep into the game. So they're just going to just let him rock. Um, for the most part, he's anchoring their rotation over here, and uh, even though like guys like Kopech and um, Baby Geo, they're struggling a little bit out of the gate. Uh, Lance Lynn's probably going to have to. They're going to need to get some depth out of him, um, certainly today. And like he's a horse, he goes out there and he he just chucks. So um, I think you're, we should probably see a bounce against the Twins here today. They're a bit more right-handed heavy. Um, they can platoon a little bit. They do have a uh, Trevor Larnick, who's looked pretty good here in the early part of the season. Um, they've got Nick Gordon, who they've been experimenting with at the top of the lineup as well. Matt Walner has come up, big-time prospect for them. But overall, pretty pretty weak against, um, against righties in general. Let's see who else they may uh, throw in the list here. Where are we? Um, Correa actually got scratched with a back yesterday, so we'll have to keep an eye on him. Buxton didn't play. I, who knows what they're going to do with him. Um, not today for me at 5,800 for Buxton, even though I like playing him when he's, when he's in the lineup, um, like he might get hurt DHing somehow. It's like walking down the tunnel or whatever. So, um, pretty attackable lineup over here. If this is what they, what they run out and pretty low upside against righties in general. So I like Lance Lynn here a little bit. I think I'd prefer playing him to a Kyle Wright, for example, um, but I don't think it's it's bad really playing either of them necessarily. If we do want to get to Lance Lynn, it is going to be with lefties, as, as we saw against the Giants. So Trevor Larnick, I think, is fine. And Nick Gordon at a cheap second base. He's lost his multi-position eligibility, but um, it's still pretty frustrating playing Nick Gordon a lot of the time. Hasn't really realized a lot of the, uh, a lot of the pop and the speed upside that he's displayed in the minor. So... Still a work in progress here for him, but um, Trevor Larnick has looked very, very good at the plate, uh, and they're they're pretty confident about sticking him at the top of the lineup pretty much against everybody. So um, I think he's a, a fine piece if you want to get after Lance Lynn a, bit, a little bit. You can play a Matt Walner one-off or something like that, but probably no, no stacks here. Um, in general, I think you're going to see a, a, a bounce for, uh, for Lynn. Pablo Lopez on the other side. Um, I'd, I'd like this a lot here today, and generally I do not like attacking the White Sox um, unless the, the spot really calls for it, and certainly not on on full slates. we got a full 10 games today, and generally I don't like doing that, but uh, Pablo here, he's got a new pitch, and you're not going to see it here in the sheet because I haven't up updated it, but um, it's the sweeper that he's throwing that's kind of taking over, over baseball. Uh, Drew Rasmussen really, and, and the Rays um, have kind of brought this to the forefront, and a lot of guys are moving to this if they want to get a bit more depth on their breaking pitches. And it's really just a, a horizontal pitch. Um, it, it does exactly as its namesake would suggest, and it sweeps rather than, than breaks down and, and slides more. Uh, like a, a slider, a curveball, or a slurve, or anything like that. Um, it's a bit more similar to a, it's kind of a, a mixture between a cutter and a slider, and it just sweeps. So it's got a lot of horizontal break. And for Pablo, he has really come to like it. And at 7,300, I think this is a fantastic, it's an excellent pitch, number one, against righties. And at 73, I think this is a fantastic price. However, we're seeing elevated ownership on him, so I think the market, at least in early runs, um, has also kind of caught on to this. But he's been fantastic early in the season here, going deep into games, and he's pretty comfortable throwing this pitch and adding it to the arsenal over here in Minnesota. So 
Um, at a, a medium projection, you're about 16, 17 points, give or take. Uh, I, I like this a lot, and I think this is one of the main pieces down here in the in the lower sort of mid-range 7K area that you can really mix into your pools, pair with a, Sho, a Shohei Otani or a, a DeGrom or something like that. Um, and that's probably why we're seeing the elevated ownership here. There's really just not a lot of options in the in the 7Ks today. So really good option here for with, with Pablo uh, targeting the White Sox. Because once again, um, I mean, we're, we're paying some pretty uh, pretty big numbers here for Tim Anderson in particular. 57 against righties. I don't really like targeting that. I like him more so against lefties. And the price tag itself is still a little worrisome there. 55 for Luis Robert. Um, they're a little right-handed heavy over here. So we'll see what they want to do. They do have, a, you know, the Gavin Sheets and, and the Benintendi types of guys. Uh, Oscar Colas down, down here at the bottom of the lineup. Um, so we'll see what they want to do. But overall, they're going to be probably pretty right-handed heavy again this season and attackable in the right matchups. And I think Pablo probably qualifies here today. Now, we might not see the overwhelming strikeout stuff that he showed against the Marlins, for example. Uh, but I think this is still a pretty good spot, and he can outperform this number here. So really no offense here in this game for me, uh, mostly just the pitching Lance Lynn and a good bit of Pablo. Okay, Royals and Texas, and Jordan Lyles on the mound for the Royals. Uh, probably not going to be going near him today. We talked about Texas yesterday. Uh, when this team gets hot, man, and, and they get going, they're going to put up a lot of crooked numbers, and they're going to do it in a hurry. And we saw it yesterday that pretty much everybody got going. Um, even Jonah Heim behind the plate. We like him against righties. Hits from the left side pretty well. Dolis Garcia got into a baseball, hit a granny. Uh, Corey Seager also got off the schneid a little bit. So encouraging for sure from the Rangers uh, to finally see them pop a little bit. I think they, you can go right back to them. They'll probably be a little bit more popular today attacking Jordan Lyles. Um, don't have ownership numbers for them in aggregate off the, off the top here, but uh, they'll probably see some more ownership and... Targeting some of these guys, I think, is fine again, but you you got to pay for them. They're still expensive, so that might keep their their ownership numbers down um, with the rest of the field. Since you know we've still got some really chalk stuff that we'll get to. Uh, Josh Young, thirty five hundred. You can you can play this. Jordan Lyles not totally immune to giving up some some power to righties. He's he's definitely better against righties. Um, just a 281 average. They'll hit for some average, but not a lot of power. 146 ISO. We've talked about this a little bit. 17% strikeout rate, and that's really how we want to attack the Rangers. It's guys that are going to make them swing and miss, because they will whiff. But Jordan Lyle's not going to throw it past them. Um, Al, we, at least in, in the most probable outcomes, want to attack Jordan Lyle's. Uh, it's, it's with the lefties. 271 average, 360 Woba, and a 225 ISO. 21% K rate all well below average um, numbers, and a 33% hard contact to the left side, 1.8 homers per nine. So slight fly ball lean, and he's on the barrel at, I believe, the highest clip of the day. So uh, we definitely want to attack this, and you're going to see some ownership on the Rangers. If you don't, then jump on board, because this is a, a pretty damn good spot to attack some Jordan Lyles. Um, on the other side, DeGrom on the mound, uh, this price tag's way too cheap. And really the only kind of concern here that we have with DeGrom, number one is going deep enough into the game. Uh, we need him to throw 95 and 100 pitches. Um, under 10,000, though, a little bit of that is priced in, in that, uh, well, we don't necessarily need 95 out of him if we're only paying 9,900. So that's uh, that's encouraging, number one. Uh, number two, he gets the Royals. Okay, they're bad. And, and we saw what Heaney did to him last night, just tore them apart. Uh, I think DeGrom is probably going to have similar success here. The only thing that we've got to worry about with DeGrom is he's on the barrel. This is the only weakness, okay, right? He's got a 43% K rate. Um, he's not giving up a hell of a lot of hard contact, certainly to lefties. A little bit, though, to righties, and that's where most of that barrel rate is coming from. Um 36.5% to the right side of the plate. They'll hit for some power against him. In his last 75 innings, he's given up a 202 ISO to righties. Now, not 
really outsized in the way of batting average, of course. 153 average to lefties, 209 average to righties. Those are fantastic numbers. And he's not walking people, so it's it's barrel contact. And it's really because he's only relying on the two pitches. This is a four-seamer and slider. And if he's not commanding the four-seamer and, and really not feeling the slider a little bit, he has a tendency to float it over the middle of the plate. And to same-handed hitters, that'll kind of get him in trouble sometimes. So not inducing a whole hell of a lot of soft contact. Well, that's mostly because he's throwing 100 and with a 93-mile-an-hour slider. Um, but he, he, like, he's excellent everywhere else. That's really the only concern that we've got with him. Uh, that does not mean whatsoever that I want to uh, go after him with the Royals. Um, the only guy that you could consider would be Salvi. I, I don't want to touch Bobby Witt here. It would be Salvi from the right side, but 5,000, you want to go one-off Salvi against DeGrom? I mean, <laughs> no thank you. Uh, so not my favorite play there, to say the least. Uh, we're just going to have as much DeGrom as we can get, of course, against the Royals here. And I say only here, but we're only showing him, showing 50% ownership on him so far. Uh, to be quite honest, I think this number's a little bit low, even though we've got a good bit of, um, good number of arms that we can mix in on the mound today. You don't have to go with the DeGrom. Uh, I think you probably should, because this is a fantastic matchup. Royals right now in 280 PAs, give or take, against righties this season, striking out at a 25% clip, 47 WRC plus so far, 109 ISO with a 243 WOBA, and now they get DeGrom. So, um... Slight susceptibility to righties and getting on the barrel, but uh, the, whatever. This is the Royals. Play play as much Texas as you can. Okay, Coors Field again. Here we go. Cardinals and the Rockies. Miles Michaelis on the mound for the Birds. Uh, 6600 This is a good price tag for him in general. He has enough in the tank to pop through this at some points of the season. Now, we're not doing it with him uh, at... at Coors Field, just, it's just not happening. His slider's not good enough to bury down in the strike zone to make him very, very effective at Coors Field. Uh, he throws a curveball at a full 21%. And it, it's a neutral curveball at sea level. So you get this this baby floating up at uh, elevation, and it could turn into some crooked numbers real quick. Four-seamer, sinker, slider, curveball combo doesn't have a change. So it makes him a little bit susceptible to lefties as well with a, you know, not so much in the average, but 270 Woba, you know, it's whatever, it's good, and 160 ISO. So a little notable there. Um, contact numbers, doesn't walk people. It did, all of this stuff is, is good, stays off the barrel. It's the raw strikeout stuff and the, and, and the amount of contact that he pitches to, 19% K rate in aggregate, really to both sides, and a full 83% contact rate. So that's not a recipe for Coors Field at all, and I'm probably going to be staying off him, as is the field. Now, once again, at 6,600, uh, he has the upside to suppress and go six innings or, or, or something like this, strike out five against the Rockies. Um, I know last night they, uh, they really, I mean, kind of, I say exploded, but put up seven runs or whatever they did. But they're overall still going to be a, a pretty weak lineup. And getting after Steven Matz, he's got a markedly worse split in terms of uh, you know, his numbers against righties than does Michaelis. So not overly attackable here with either side of the plate. It's really just the curveball that he uses so much that's bad, or neutral value at the very least. It will be bad at Coors. So, um... If I remember correctly, he actually got torched last season by the Rockies, gave up like 12 in a day game or something uh, in three innings. So he has had a bad outing or two, I believe, at Coors Field before. So uh, no Michaelis in most scenarios here. If you land on a couple just because you, you're running like uh, DeGrom and Otani, uh, the or Otani teams um, with a, an expensive Texas stack or, or the Braves or whatever, um, if you land on him, you know, it's not like I'd X him out of the pool necessarily, but uh, not going out of my way to get like a full 10% or anything crazy of Miles Michael is here. Um, so you can sack the Rockies for sure. You want to go after righties 
with some of these lefties here. Um, Jerry Profar, okay. It's fine, 3800 Price starting to creep up a little bit, and it should. He should not be this cheap leading off of Coors Field, even though the upside isn't quite there just yet. Um, he's still going to pop in, in pretty much every projection metric that we that we have here. So um, the low ownership in aggregate, though, on the Rockies right now, and if you get them 10% against a guy that may have a little bit of trouble with some of his arsenal and be kind of forced into three pitches as opposed to four, then I think that that seems like a pretty decent tournament play. Right now, we're, we're showing sub-10% on all of them. And the price tags are attainable. But like I said, it, batted ball-wise, nothing outsized that we really want to go after necessarily. If it, w it would be lefties at, uh, you know, a neutral ground ball to fly ball is Michaelis. Um, so that's Charlie Blackman territory, 4,700. It's fine. I mean, he's had a good start to the season, as a matter of fact. And this is their kind of righty-heavy lineup. You'll see Ryan McMahon back in the lineup today. I believe he is 4,700 as well. 4,800, as a matter of fact. Um, so you'll see Mac back, and you get Jerry Profar and McMahon, uh, excuse me, and Blackman. Um, so you can target, but you could certainly stack some of the righties here as well. Don't, don't leave Chris Bryan off. It'll hit righties just fine. And if you want to throw in a C.J. Crone, like nobody's going to be playing him at 5,800 against Michael is here. So uh, I think that's fine in, in contrarian stacks as well. Not going out of my way to play a one-off C.J. Crone, but um, some playable pieces here. You had uh, Zeke Tovar finally had a, a pretty good outing last night. You also had Alan Treo with a good outing as well. You might see Alan Treo back in the list tonight because Ellaris Montero strikes out a crap load. But he also had a pretty okay night last night. So um, Rockies potentially heating up a little bit on offense and at lower ownership at Coors Field against a, a guy that's going to pitch to a full 83% contact rate. It's probably the highest number on the day. Uh, at Coors Field, it's not a good recipe. So I think that's fine. Kyle Freeland on the mound for the Rocks, 7,200. Uh, we're definitely not touching this. 17% um, aggregate K rate, 82% contact rate. Throw in the kitchen sink here. Full five pitches four-seamer sinker cutter slider change uh really none of them any good marginal four-seamer marginal cutter marginal sinker not a great slider not a good change so um he's going to give up some power really to both sides of the plate average more so to the lefties 307 384 woba 214 iso to the left side 1.6 homers per nine hard contact rate is worrisome for kyle still even though he can shove a couple of you know, will shove a couple of times this season, I believe in his last outing, uh, performed pretty well. It's the hard contact that we're really worried about. 33% to the lefties, 36% to the righties with no whiff stuff, 9% swinging strike rate, 24 and a half percent CSW. So Kyle's a, a fine middle of the rotation starter. Um, unfortunately for the Rockies, he's going to have to anchor this rotation now with, uh, Herman Marquez going down. So, um, we can get to him with lefties. You can get to him with righties. So you're going to get back on the Cardinals today. They're certainly going to be very popular once again. And their lineup against left-handers is going to be very sticky as well. Uh, Tommy Edmond, Dylan Carlson, they have seems like they're, they're falling into form with these two at the top of the lineup against lefties. Uh, Goldschmidt, he's probably uh, – if you run teams right now, you'd probably get – I would say 60% Goldschmidt or something like that. Um, it, you should probably be getting a, a boatload of him. But 5,600, I think he's underpriced here. He should be over 6,000 today. Same thing with Arenado, 52 against a lefty at Coors Field. Uh, he's historically had, had fantastic numbers. Um, he didn't play there anymore, but he still hits lefties amazingly well. Wilson Contreras has been very disappointing to the start of the season. 4,200, cheap Kessler piece at Coors Field. Um, you can't really ignore this, so you're going to get to Tyler O'Neill as well. Taylor Motter, he'll probably be in the list today. Also, at 2,500, you're going to have to play him just because he's 2,500. Same thing with Jordan Walker and Juan Yepes. So uh, every single one of these guys you're going to get a good bit of today, uh, and I think it's pretty warranted. Kyle Freeland's not going to blow it by anybody. Um, and unlikely to have back-to-back -back good starts at, uh, at Coors Field, I think. Okay, Washington and the Angels. JoJo Gray on the mound. We talked about him a little bit. Uh, we're not playing him. 
I mean, but geez, 6,200. I mean, now he's a sea level. He's not even a Coors Field, and he's at the same cheap price tag. Still has the K stuff, right? 23, 24% to both sides of the plate, but it's the power numbers, man. Um, we, we still have to see in aggregate all of this stuff come down, and he got blasted by the Braves, I think, in his first start. So we're not dealing with this just yet. And if you want to take some tournament shots on a 6,200 JoJo Gray targeting, I mean, I don't think you need to, to do this today. But uh, you know, targeting some some whiffs from the Angels, yeah, they they're striking out so far. 300 PAs against righties at a 24% clip. So, I mean, Trout's been striking out a lot over the last couple of seasons against righties. Uh, they're pushing 30% nearly. Shohei will strike out. Um, Taylor Ward not so much, but who knows what what's going on with Anthony Rendon? He got scratched late last night. Hunter Renfro. He'll strike out a little bit. Jake Lamb stinks. He'll strike out. Um, so there, there's some, there's a route here for JoJo to get there again and some, and to suppress some contact. But the Angels should be popular because he just gives up way too much power on the barrel. Uh, also, right up here with uh, Jordan Lyles and and barrel rate, uh, tops of the barrel rate spectrum of the day. So 3.24 ISO still hasn't come down yet. 3.3 homers per nine in his last 62 and two thirds. Against lefties, uh, no thank you. Huge walk rate still. So if you start walking people and putting people on base, eventually you're going to get blasted. And despite 6,200 being, you know, an attractive price tag for a 23, 24% strikeout rate, um, I'm not overly crazy about getting any JoJo Gray tonight against the Angels. Shohei on the on the mound for uh, the Halos, 9,700. Good price for him as well. And... Median projection may be a tick high, but against the Nationals, we saw that, you know, against lefties, they're going to be a little bit sticky. They they tore apart Josie Suarez a bit last night, but against righties, I think they're going to be markedly worse and and offer markedly lower upside. So, um, now Shohei, while Shohei is Shohei, right, he does have a little bit of a problem with throwing strikes early in the count sometimes. Now, just a 60% strike one rate, I mean, it's not awful, right? But it's it's average. It's not well above average like you'd expect um, everything from Shohei. But we've got a lot of pitches here coming in uh, on Shohei, but he mostly is a four-seamer slider kind of guy. Uh, does throw the splitter, mixing in the cutter and the curveball a little bit. Um, but it's the it's the gas at, at 98. He struggled a little bit in his last outing, just five innings I want to say, maybe six. Uh, could have been against Oakland. I could be making this up, but um, I remember watching his start, and and the control was a little bit off. So that's what we run into with Shohei a little bit. He could start walking people. Remember early in his career as a pitcher, uh, he had walk problems, and he, he would walk five in an inning sometime, and and or sometimes it wouldn't make it out of the third. So um, that hasn't plagued him over the last couple of seasons. 15% swing strike rate, CSW at 32%. Um, you know, nothing is terribly wrong or anything with Shohei. Uh, so I think you can play full Angels correlations again if you want. You don't have to play the Angels with him. You know, you can play him solo. He's only at 15% right now, and that seems quite low against Nationals. Um so I like this spot for him, and we'll see what the ownership does throughout the day. But getting to Shohei and a good bit of the Angels, I think, is probably pretty warranted tonight. Uh, I think I'm fully off of the Nationals. Maybe a little bit of JoJo. Okay, Milwaukee and Arizona. Um, Milwaukee got torn apart by Zach Allen last night. That was good to see. Uh, he spun it really, really well. 11 strikeouts, I think. And, and Brewers are going to do this occasionally. Um, and so far this season, 280 PAs against righties, 24% strikeout rate, 350 WOBA is buoyed really by a 12% walk rate so far. So they're not creating just yet. Um, and those numbers are going to normalize a little bit. Probably not the K rate, but the walk rate at 12%. Uh, that's definitely high. That's not really sustainable over a full season. So that's going to come down. The WOBA will come down commensurately and 
we'll see what they where they wind up in in the creation metrics. Right now, at about a 111 WRC plus, buck 50 ISO. They hit for a little bit more power in aggregate against righties last season. Um, so we'll see. That, like they're still plenty powerful, right? They've got uh, plenty of lefties. Like your Jesse Winker, who didn't even actually start last night. Um, you've got uh, Rowdy Telez, right? Garrett Mitchell, Bryce Terang, and uh, of course Yelich at the top of the lineup. 49 for Yelich. I mean, no thank you still. But uh, they can platoon here, and, and they can really do it both ways. Um, attacking Merrill Kelly, we liked, it, we liked to attack him earlier in his career, but... Not so much over the last couple of seasons. We will get him get to him in a second, but on the mound for the Brewers, Corbin Burns, 8,500, 19 point median projection so so far. Oof, uh, I don't know here. I I'm kind of worried about Corbin Burns. He's had trouble throwing strikes over his last 200 innings, 210. As a matter of fact, he's only got a 58 percent strike one rate. Uh, that's concerning for a guy that's got a 30 percent K rate. Um, this seems like a it, on first glance, I saw that Burns was getting the D-backs, and I thought this was a kind of a sneaky spot for Arizona. Uh, I think they've gotten to him a couple of times in the past. I want to say last season sometime, he was like 40%, 50% in tournaments, and Arizona just destroyed him. Um, I could be making that up, but I think this is a, a sneaky, bad matchup for him. Um Batted ball wise, he's he's got a little bit of susceptibility here. He's got to throw strikes, and it's not necessarily that it's translating into walks, but it's elevating the pitch count. And I think this it's priced in now at 8,500. Now when we're paying for him at at 10,000 or whatever, um, that is significant risk. Now at 8,500, 14% ownership, uh, I think this is a mid-range target that you could play as well. Arizona's been fantastic, certainly against righties so far this season. 260 PAs, not creating all that great just yet, but just a 19% strikeout rate. So they've been very sticky, and we saw against like Michael Grove, for example, uh, over the weekend, they put up a 12 spot. Um, so if guys don't have it, you know, they there's still plenty of upside here for the D-backs. They've been winning baseball games, right? Good start to the season for them. Um, so do I want to outright fade Corbin Burns? Probably not. Uh, I think the the strikeout rate is just too high, similar to Andrew Heaney last night. The upside in tournaments is too high at a depressed price tag. Um, and everything else so far looks pretty good, but he's had two bad starts to the season. And really going back to the end of last year, he's been kind of off. So um, we'll have to dig into maybe velocity and, and release points and, and all this kind of thing. Probably won't do this uh, on stream or anything, but um, got to dig into Corbin Burns a little bit. And for the most part, I want to take a wait and see approach with him. Uh, I don't want to be smashing just because of 15% ownership. Something like a a 40 or 50% Corbin Burns tonight. I think I think you're taking a little bit too much risk in that regard against Arizona. Uh, they could platoon really really well, and they've seen him well in the past. So. Um, I do want to get some of him. I think I'll probably come in right around the field because the upside, once again, is at 30% strikeout rate. Uh, raw numbers are very, very strong. 200 average to both sides, 270 Woba to both sides, not a buck 40, buck 50 ISO to both sides, right? 29% K rate to both sides. Hard contact, a little elevated to the righties, but um, you know, nothing super worrisome here. Huge ground ball rate against lefties. So if we are going to target him, it is going to be with some guys that can get the baseball in the air. And that's Paven Smith uh, in particular. 2,600 is a pretty good play down here, um, certainly on the late slate. Uh, Corbin Carroll, I'm going to play him again at 3,100. Absolutely. Uh, Jake McCarthy, he can lift a baseball as well. Josh Rojas, more of a ground ball hitter. Don't want to play him at 5,100. I don't think so. Cattell Marte would rather, rather pivot to him at second base and play him. He's a switch hitter. So we don't sacrifice any of that late game upside after Burns out of the game. Um, 
And, you know, if they bring in a, a lefty or something uh, to face like a Josh Rojas, you know, just flip Cattell Marte around to the right side and, and he'll do just fine. 4,300. He looks a bit healthier now this season as well. And if we, you'll recall, two seasons ago, we were paying 55, 5,800 for Cattell Marte when this kid heats up. He's a good, good hitter over here. And he is by far the best hitter on the team. So, um, there's some upside here for Arizona, but also a good bit of upside. Price adjusted for Corbin Burns. Uh, on the other side, mound for the D-backs is Merrill Kelly. And I think this is probably about as low as I'm going to want to go today price-wise. Uh, 7100 I think this is fine. There's upside for him to tear apart to Brewers as well. Last season, it, Merrill Kelly went on a streak of, um, I mean, like eight or ten games where he was just fantastic. Uh and at 71, like we we're paying nine, ten thousand 10,000 for Kelly, and he's never played because he really doesn't have all that striking of, a, of an arsenal or aggregate um, number representation here. A little bit of susceptibility to the left side with a 174 ISO and a 19% strikeout rate, but no hard contact really to speak of. Soft contact numbers are fine. He suppresses, and that's because he's got five full pitches. And four seamer sinker cutter with a curveball change, and all of them about neutral to plus value for him. And you know, curveball is not great, but three fastballs and a, a pretty decent changeup, all a, a very workable. Uh, and against Brewers, who are a pretty undisciplined team, as we saw last evening. So um, I think you can play some Merrill Kelly here tonight. Definitely, it's a very low ownership. Median projection looks fine. I, but I think at this price tag, there's there's upside to pop through it here a little bit. Uh, just an aggregate 22% K rate, but we're really looking for suppression metrics. He could pop for six innings and, and strike out six or seven uh, or something this evening. I think this is a, a fine tournament play. Definitely a lower ownership. You might even be able to get to him in cash. But don't be surprised, though, with the Brewers and how well they can platoon uh, against righties that this 174 ISO that uh, Kelly has uh, against lefties kind of uh, rears its head a little bit. So I think it's fine. You can play you can play pretty much everybody here. I think it's a really interesting game. Okay, last game of the day, Dodgers and the Giants. Uh, Dodgers went off last night. Um, it was really difficult to be playing any Dodgers stacks. Uh, even short stacks of like a Mookie, Outman, and a, and a Max Muncy, who you definitely needed. He hit two homers and I believe had seven ribs. So uh, he was going to win tournaments at 0% ownership. Um, but Mookie had a good day, and as did James Outman. Um, you know, so good hitters, and this is <laughs> that's the risk we take when fading the Dodgers, even in uh, even in suboptimal matchups against Logan Webb. Uh, they're going to be a little bit more popular tonight getting Alex Wood, but that's a risk we take. And unfortunately, um, you know, we weren't really too heavily on the Dodgers last night. Maybe some of you guys were. Uh, I certainly wasn't. Uh, Dustin May on the mound for them tonight. And 9,200, I think his price tag's too high in general. I like Dustin May. Um, really throws really hard, got a really good, good arsenal here but it, i think ugh, it just leaves a little bit on the table to, to, with the strikeout rate and it, it's really kind of frustrating um would like to see that with this arsenal throw a few more strikes early in the count because that does translate for him to a little bit of control issue and walking people that's a 10 percent walk rate it's a big number now shortish sample here still just 43 innings 24% K rate to the lefties, so that's good, but a 12.5% walk rate, so that's not good. Um, so there's a little bit of susceptibility there, and the Giants, of course, they're going to platoon with the best of them. However, against righties this season, short sample, just the 93 PAs, these numbers would be markedly worse uh, if it were not for that day against Lance Lynn. But against righties, 39% strikeout rate so far. <laughs> uh, of course, very noisy. 082 ISO, so and this is all including these numbers against Lance Lynn when they tore him apart the other day. So, um, 47 WRC plus. Like, sure, if you want to attack with Dustin May and 6% ownership, I think that's fine. 
he's going to be kind of forgotten about because you've got Lance Lynn, you've got Kyle Wright, you've got certainly DeGrom and Otani at the top. He's going to be kind of ignored. So pretty good late slate play, I think, because Otani will garner most of the most of the ownership there. Um, but even on the main slate, I think you can get to some Dustin May here. He has upside in a really good workable arsenal against what's overall going to be a pretty weak lineup. Um, but Dustin May is kind of frustrating sometimes, and he doesn't go all that deep into games yet. He's still a young arm, and he gets Dave Roberts a lot of the time, as we can see, in full eight starts since the beginning of last season, just 80 pitches per. So we need him to go deeper into the game to be overly comfortable paying this price tag for him. But as a median projection, 15, 16 points right now, very low ownership. I think this is a pretty decent tournament play uh, if you'd like to get pretty different and play some chalky stacks, for example. Um, all of the numbers really, really good. Relies on the four-seamer, heavy sinker, cutter mix uh, with a good slider. So um, neutralizes power to both sides of the plate, mixing in a little bit of a changeup as well. So five pitches here. If you can really develop all of this stuff and start throwing deeper into the game, uh, he could be very efficient. And he could, in the future, along with, of course, Walker Bueller, anchor this rotation for the Dodgers. So good arm over here and a very attackable lineup uh, for the most part against the Giants. However, he is a big ground baller, buck 60 ground ball to fly ball. We'd like this a little bit lower when we're attacking ground ball pitchers, um, maybe like buck 20, buck 30 or so when we want to attack them with heavy fly ball hitters like the Giants. So I think this this batted ball profile mostly plays into the hands of Dustin May here rather than the Giants, but they will lift the baseball and get it in the air. And that, in particular, Jock has fantastic numbers against righties just in general. Uh, so does Michael Conforto. Lamont Wade, less in the power department. Still not sure where they're leading him off. Um, overall, pretty low upside. He's got a huge walk rate, though, so he gets on base, and that's really what they're after. Um, they're trying to Oakland their way to another World Series or a uh, NL ch um, pennant race, but um, you know, like, I don't know. It's, I don't think it's really going to work. Yaz has pop against righties, of course, as well. Four thousand. Uh, these guys are well priced, so on a late slate, I think they're probably an okay stack. Nobody's really going to play them because uh, Burns, Dustin May, and Shohei will certainly be garnering all of the ownership at the top. Um, so I think that's fine, but on the main slate, probably going to pass on the Giants. Alex Wood on the mound for them, 8200 Price really hasn't moved, and he gets just as bad a matchup in, in this outing against the Dodgers as he had in his last against the White Sox. So... 13-point median projection. <laughs> Might even be a little high. Uh, now, Alex Wood's got fine stuff, and his problem really is just to the right side. Gives up a little bit of power. He threw a lot of pitches in the He only made it three innings, I believe, um, in his first start against the White Sox. So they, they made him really work, and the Dodgers can do a lot of the same. Um, very short sample here, so I don't even want to mention the 19% walk rate so far uh, against lefties this season for the Dodgers, but um, they're always going to be at the top of the the leaderboard, so to speak, in walk rate, really against both sides. So they're a very patient team, and still, even without Trey Turner at the top of the lineup, they're very sticky and a lot of good hitters, as we saw last night. Uh, they just keep cycling guys through. Uh, now it's the James Outman show. So um, do you want to stack some of the Dodgers? Sure. I mean, we saw last night that they can win you tournaments when they're completely ignored by the rest of the field. And they may be once again tonight. We don't want to play guys necessarily in San Francisco a lot of the time. Um, 55 degrees, and but you know, if they get to baseball in the air... Uh, Wind might be able to take some take some stuff down there at Oracle. So uh, I think it's fine getting into some Dodgers here. Probably no Alex Wood. Um, I don't really like going after the Dodgers. And uh, he's got some concerns here, of course, um, with the uh, with the power numbers to righties. So 8,200 is mostly why I'm staying off of Alex Wood, though I don't really like the price tag. Uh, okay, so that, I think, is it for the breakdown. Um Let's quickly go over stacks. Toronto's going to be very popular. 
Uh, I think we get to some, uh, some offense here, probably off the board offense in both the Mets and San Diego. Less crazy about San Diego, but certainly it's mostly because of their pricing. Um, certainly you can get to the Mets against Ryan Weathers. Both these guys have trouble throwing strikes. Uh, Atlanta for sure in the Cincy, uh, the Cincy game here. Kyle Wright less so on the mound, um, but probably seeing a bit too much ownership for me. I'd rather get to Dustin May, I think. Uh, at $100 cheaper than the early 18% to 6% that we're showing. Uh, three to one that we're getting on Dustin May and the ownership figure to Kyle Wright. I think that's probably a little bit aggressive. Seattle and the Cubs. Uh, mostly the Cubs here for me tonight, I think. Um, really no offense uh, that I'm super crazy about. But uh, you can play an off-the-board Cubs stack against Chris Flexen for sure. Uh White Sox and Minnesota mostly pitching here. Not really crazy about offense. Kansas City and Texas, almost all Texas for, for me here today. A lot of DeGrom, of course, and we can target Jordan Lyles with Texas, certainly. Uh, St. Louis and Colorado offense again, uh, but don't be surprised if Michaelis suppresses for about five innings and six Ks or something crazy. Um, probably be surprised if Kyle Freeland does the same thing against Cardinals. Washington and the Angels, you're going to go right back to the Angels for sure. They'll be chalky again against JoJo uh, until he shows that he can strike guys out and stay off of the barrel for about eight starts in a row. Um, you're going to be targeting him pretty much every outing. Milwaukee and Arizona, I think you can play pretty much everybody in this in this game. Uh, you can play Burns, you can play Carol, Kelly, and you can play probably both offenses as well. Kelly certainly not immune to getting blasted and something might be a little up with Corbin Burns but uh, good price tags on all of these guys everybody down here interesting late slate stuff for sure and Dodgers in San Francisco like Dustin May maybe a little bit of the Dodgers once again probably just need the Dodgers every single every single day as has been the case really for the last like four years so um, that's it for the breakdown once again we do have projections up and we will be pushing updates as, as the models uh, wake up, so to speak, and um, and start to adjust. So keep an eye out for that, guys. Uh, good luck tonight if you are punting.